Similarly, amongst the Homo sapiens human beings, there were certain select rishis who could decipher the sound in the atmosphere in certain patterns. Those rishis sitting in Aravalis, in Himalayas, in Vindhyas, in, by the banks of different nadis, they started accumulating those sound waves in their mind and in whatever form it came, see when you go for that ECG report, it will go up, come down, go up, come down, right? Sonic waves are also like that. The pattern in which they listened, they beautifully were able to transcribe it into a mantra. You are able to get? That is why we say that Swaram cannot be changed. The Rishi did not create that sound. He has heard that sound wave that way. Sahasra Sirsa Purushaha Sahasra Aksha Sahasra Pat. So he has heard that sound that way. That is why we say Gayantam Trayati Iti Gayatri. Gayatri is that mantra which will protect the person who recites it. Only if he recites it in the way it has to be recited. Then only it will protect. So this sonic wave the Rishi would have heard. And he will translate it into a mantra. Similarly, there will be countless rishis across the mountain ranges and by the banks of various Punya Nadi who would have decoded that particular mantra. They would have decoded and as they decode, they would have noticed certain passages look like prose. Certain would have been in the form of poetry. Whatever was in the form of prose became yajus. Whatever was in the form of poetry Padyam became Rik. You're able, following till now? When it is in the form of poetry, it is very, very fit to be sung. See, you can very, it is very tough to sing prose. Once there lived a man. You see, how will you sing a story? Right? You won't you won't have the talam also because see, if it has to be sung into music, you need a rhythm. For rhythm, you need certain words, these many number of words in every sentence. Prose won't have that. First line will have 10 words. Second line will have, oh, are you? There will be only three words. Then how will I finish that talam? So, yajus was in prose. So, it was not fit to be sung. Whereas, rik was in the form of poetry. So, most sections of rik was taken and set to music. That is, That became samam. So, Rig Vedam and Sama Vedam is pro, uh, poetry and Sama Vedam is poetry plus music. Whereas, process, Yajur Vedam. Now, certain important sections from all the three Vedas were put together and that was called Atharvana Vedam. So, if you look at many of our ancient texts, they will say three Vedas. Now, you will say, Kya hai, sir? We thought there were four. You can say there are two. You can say there are three. You can say there are four. Why you can say there are two? There is only Rik and Yajur. You can say there are three because Rik only becomes Samam. You can say there are four because Atharvana Vedam is a compendium of the first three. So two or three or four. Correct? Now, one is in poetry, one is in prose, one is in poetry plus music. So all of this was in a mixture. That is why a person called Dvaipayana. Dvaipayana means a person who is technically born in an island. So he was born on an island. Which island? We don't know whether it was Kalapani. What is that series? Right? Some Kalapani. Whether he was born in Andaman Nicobar, we don't know. But he was born in an island in the fresh waters of Yamuna. So he was called Dvaipayana. And he was very dark complexioned. So he was called Krishna Dvaipayana. He took the Herculean task upon him to beautifully bucket them into their respective categories. So there will be a mixture of prose, poetry, poetry plus music. So he took all the poetry plus music separately. Poetry separately. Prose separately. Since he categorized them, the categorization process is called Vyasam. The process is called Vyasam. Since Krishna Dvaipayana took the task of doing Vyasam to the Vedic passages, he is called Veda Vyasa. Understood? Now, in this four, we have got Rik. This Rikka can also be 
when you bring that together with the veda it will become rig veda but generally technically you have to say rik rik is a pattern so rik yajus sama atharvanam correct now in this rik veda there is purusha suktam sir we thought it will be easy it will become easy don't worry you know uh, you may be accustomed to listening to ramayana mahabharatam and bhagavatam they are on a different scale krishna will come he'll steal butter you will laugh i will laugh i will cry you will cry so that is on a different plane but you will get used to it at the end of this lecture you will cry for this also <laughs> now there are 18 mantras in yaju uh, purusha suktam of which 16 mantras are found in the rigvedam mandalam 10 suktam 90 so out of 18 passages 16 passages of the purusha suktam is found in rigvedam any rigvedis here 1 2 3 4 uh, very good 5 so so purusha suktam is a part of rigvedam as well now let's go to shukla yajurvedam see in yajurvedam there are two shukla and krishna many people see we are not very good at singing nor are we good at memorizing so many followers of bharat desham will be from yajurvedam only so that is prose so in yajurvedam we have shukla yajurvedam and krishna yajurvedam one white one black sir in mani if it is there it is okay in vedam also you are saying white yajurvedam black yajurvedam there is a different connotation why that word krishna and shukla came i'll tell you that during the course in shukla yajurvedam generally you will very rarely find uh, south indians kannadigas telugu speaking people tamil speaking people very rarely they will be followers of shukla yajurvedam shukla yajurvedam is generally found in upper parts of maharashtra major parts of gujarat southern part of rajasthan and the current day karachi region so that was the place where shukla yajurveda followers used to be there so in shukla yajurvedam in adhyayam 34 there is purusha sukta so any shukla yajurveda followers here 1 2 3 very good huh? so you are the rarest of the rare like rh negative so we have to give them full respect next time first row reserved for them so shukla yajurvedam now krishna yajurvedam i'll see how many how many of you follow krishna yajurvedam ah see in krishna yajurvedam all the 18 passages are found in the third prashnam let us now go to samavedam purusha suktam is spotted in samavedam as well but only seven mantras are found any samavedam followers here ah so samavedam also purusha suktam is there atharvana vedam any atharvana vedam followers here followers any god name you should not tell facebook page traditionally have you been following or not so in atharvana vedam also there is purusha suktam that is why the first shloka i said right vedeshu paurusham suktam this purusha suktam alone is found in all the four vedas shri rudram is found but not in entirety few passages mainly it comes only in krishna yajurvedam it doesn't come in samavedam as well that is why it is said that appaya dikshita felt very bad he was born as a samavedi and he couldn't learn shri rudram he was a great shiva bhakta but he couldn't learn rudram because you are not supposed to learn any passage of the veda to which veda you don't belong to remember this it is like for example i generally give this example some may get bored the sorting hat will always take the choice of the person correct so even if you have got gryffindor if you want slytherin you can go but in vedas you can't change that house if you are born into yajur veda whether you like yajur veda or not you have to learn only yajur veda you cannot learn samavedam when can you learn samavedam only if you entirely complete yajur vedam you can go to samavedam so that was the rule in those days now purusha suktam is found in entirety in the vedas that said so we have spoken about the importance of swaram vedic language the importance of the four vedas how purusha suktam is found in the four vedas now i'll talk about five commentators to the vedas remember these names uvata acharya mahidhara acharya um, then bhattabhaskara 
సాయనాచార్య రంగరామానుజముని ఫైవ్ కమెంటేటర్స్ టు ద పురుష సూక్తం ఎక్స్ట్రీమ్లీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ సార్ ఆర్ కమెంటేటర్స్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఎక్స్ట్రీమ్లీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఓన్లీ ఫర్ వేదాస్ నో ఈవెన్ ఫర్ రామాయణం మహాభారతం అండ్ భాగవతం యూ నీడ్ ద కమెంటేటర్స్ హెల్ప్ హ్యావ్ యూ హర్డ్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ బాయ్ హూ సపోర్టెడ్ హూ ఆర్ స్కిల్డ్ బై దశరథ వెన్ దశరథ వెంట్ ఆన్ హంటింగ్ shravanakumar that also you don't know sir there is no mention of the word shravana in ramayanam the boy's name is not called shravana at all generally we we'll, uh, the moment i say shravanakumara you will remember one scene the boy will have one bamboo stick <laughs> two cups one father seated their mother there is no mention of such stick to materials nothing is there in the ramayana sir when did that arise i don't know before ramanand sagar somewhere before his time only it came so there is no mention of that who was a sh- boy we don't know his name let his name be mr x elon musk will like <laughs> let him remain mr x this boy was a sanyasi says ramayana so uh, okay i will give you an another instance dasharatha finally you have come to ramayanam sir right <laughs> give some rest to purusha suktam huh. okay in the ramayana dasharatha had to coronate the eldest of his sons called shri ramachandra as the higher apparent as the yuvaraja correct but what happened in the middle kaikeyi ah, kai kai, sir this cause is kaikeyi kai lady who, who brainwashed kaikeyi kai with surfex cell Uh, mantara came in brainwashed so mantara brainwashed kaikeyi and kaikeyi sought two boons correct she said you remember those two boons that you had fought timidhwaja and that day you gave me two boons and i did not know what to ask now i am asking those two boons she said correct so we are under the assumption that only after kaikeyi asked those two boons dasharatha had a mild heart attack correct there is a small issue here when rama was informed that he will become the higher apparent was bharata there in town ah oh, bharata was not there in town see you have got four sons one son has gone to some foreign trip it is a major function some marriage what will you do you will inform that person you will say block your calendar uh, check if you are getting economy or premium economy uh, come soon we will miss you you will say you will we will buy clothes for them now in a normal scenario dasharatha should have waited for bharata to come no sir he is living many thousand miles away after dasharatha was dead in 7 days bharata came so dasharatha could have waited for 7 days but he didn't wait i am telling you all this before kaikeyi asked those two boons so he calls rama and rama comes and dasharatha informs rama today is punarvasu what is punarvasu who star ah rama star because rama was finishing 24 and was turning 25 that day he told happy birthday rama tum- i am going to give you a gift tomorrow is your pattabhishekam rama was a bit confused this was too quick right any event management person won't take this task at all in one day they have to arrange tomorrow is pushya nakshatra he said Uh, rama you have to get your coronation done then he gives a list of reasons he says surya angaraka rahu bihi surya angaraka angaraka means mars and rahu the shadow deity they are all in the straight line and for the monarch it is very bad monarch will die very soon and i am getting all inauspicious dreams so i am also getting old kalidas says tam karna moolam agatya rame shrirnyasyatam iti it seems the grey hair came and told dasharatha dasharatha it is enough you give the rajyam to your son he didn't get godrej so tam karna moolam agatya rame shrirnyasyatam iti so dasharatha said rama i want to make you the higher apparent tulasi dasa makes a very intelligent intervention here it seems rama told his father this is not there in the mula ramayanam in ramcharitamanas it is there rama told see father all we four brothers we have grown up together whatever dress we buy it will all be the same for the function 
so without my brothers i will not get the coronation done but in valmiki ramayanam rama doesn't give such kind of huge cinema dialogues he said okay father but dasharatha felt bad looking at rama's face because rama was very intelligent in showing his feelings without speaking them out this is one shlokam in ayodhya kandam so the moment he saw his son's face he said rama see bharata is away i understand even without rama saying now dasharatha intervenes and says i know bharata is away kintu chittam manushyanam anityam iti memata but you know men human beings are generally fickle minded rama what if people's wishes and desires change as per their times so i want you to get the patta abhishekam done tomorrow what is he hinting at he says that if bharata would be invited maybe he will ask the rajyam for himself correct you are able to get the point but even then dasharatha could have avoided this scenario because the rule was the eldest of the sons has to become only if the boy if the son has some deformity or is handicapped he cannot become just like the case of dhritarashtra here rama dasharatha could have said article 94f look at this article pa the eldest of the sons only has to become the king but dasharatha did not use that why because after giving away his eldest daughter shanta in adoption to romapada dasharatha did not have children for a very long time he kept on marrying one lady after the other when he went to girivraja girivraja is rajagriha that is the place where kk rajyam is it is the current day jalalabad in afghanistan so when he went to that place he spotted kaikai and kaikai's mother was at a different level kaikai is nothing in front of her she is kaikai square plus mantara cube <laughs> that is kaikai's mother tomorrow next lecture i'll tell you where it comes in ayodhya kandam now she told see you are marrying my daughter dasharatha but you already have kaushalya and no sir we thought it is kaushalya kai kai sumitra no she is referred to as madhyamamba in many places sumitra so sumitra she was a magadhi she was already married they didn't have children so this kai kai is mother uses this she says what if am i after my or on the day of my daughter's marriage with you your first wife kaushalya comes and shows that red lines <laughs> says she is pregnant then her son only will become the yuvaraja so you have to promise now that immaterial as whose ever son is the eldest it is only my kaikeyi son who should become the king she took this promise in one black and white paper and she took sir how are you telling because there is one place in ayodhya kandam where rama tells this to bharata and to which govinda raja the commentator writes four pages why he said that without the help of govinda rajiyam commentary to ramayana you will never know this that is why dasharatha was very very careful that the patta abhishekam should happen before bharata returns but the saddest part was who took this promise kai kai's mother she was dead kai kai's father was a good man he was kk raja ashwapati he comes even in our brahma sutram he would not have reminded so dasharatha was in a way convinced that nobody could have reminded kai kai because kai when kai kai mother took this black and white agreement kai kai was not there else kai kai would have used this rule why will she use those two boons okay now there is another problem here see i am not got into purusha suktam at all uh, there is one problem here kai kai is mother is dead if dasharatha uses this as an excuse stating that i had promised but that person is dead so we'll manage then how do you call him dharma raja see if this is the case then we can call him like any other politician that is where there is a dharmic rule when you make promises for the sake of marriage then those promises need not have to be fulfilled <laughs> i am not saying this this comes in the vyakhyanam the commentator govinda raja says this so don't use this indiscriminately <laughs> 
but this shlokam is recited by govinda raja in the commentary to the ramayana why i am telling you this is even to understand a narration like ramayana the commentary is so important then imagine the number of times the multifold times commentary is important to purusha suktam because we are not adept in sanskritam and purusha suktam that is why brahmanosya mukhamasi bahurajanya krutah becomes a point of contention amongst the half baked people when that mantra comes you will realize what is the true meaning of that passage okay now that we have done too much of introduction i will tell you where purusha suktam is invoked in our puranas i will give you three four instances first instance in vishnu purana dhruva maharaja the son of very good uttanapada son uttanapada was the brother of who he had one more brother can anybody say who said that priyavrata very good priyavrata and uttanapada they had three sisters sir you are <laughs> they had three sisters now guess three sisters one was the mother of kapila very good devahuti akuti prasuti that is why when you see the right way of understanding vedas is you have to listen and read ramayanam bhagavatam bharatam multiple times after that when you read vedas it is like a cake walk so now let's understand dhruva dhruva was uh, admonished by his stepmother called suruchi suruchyam so and with the guidance of narada maharishi by reciting dwadashakshari vasudeva mahamantram the lord appears on garuda then the lord suspends his panchajanya in the air and then touches the boy's cheeks the boy who has been choked with emotions now starts speaking the first shloka he says is very important for purusha suktam i'll tell you what shloka he said sahasra shirsha purushaha sahasraksha sahasrapat sarvavyapi bhuvasparshat atyatishthad dashangulam yadbhutam yachavai bhavyam purushottam tadbhavan tvatto virat swarat samrat vachapya adhipurushah this is a shlokam how did this sound not good sir how did this sound it sounded like purusha suktam itself but this is vishnu purana shlokam why because there were restrictions in the recitation to vedic passages by certain people and not certain people our rishis were so benevolent that they converted all the mantras into shlokas so that all of them can recite so this is a mantra converted shloka passage from vishnu puranam if you read dhruva struti of vishnu puranam everyone can read it is equivalent to reciting purusha suktam one let's go to bhagavatam there is one uh, instance in dashamaskandam of shrimad bhagavatam where bhuma devi goes in the form of a cow gaur bhutva ashrumukhi kinna she goes and start shedding tears before the lord stating that there are lot of people troubling me on earth they don't want me to they don't want my children to burst crackers but they will burn many farms she was telling that day so all these worries whatever she had she goes and spells that out to the lord but for the lord to appear brahma was thinking what will make him appear that is when bhagavatam states tatra gatva jagannatham devadevam vrishakapim purusham purusha suktena upatasthe samahitaha brahma recited purusha suktam for the lord to appear so we have the instance of purusha suktam in vishnu puranam we have it in bhagavata puranam we have in shanti parva of shri mahabharatam so on and so forth so purusha suktam is so important now let's go to the first mantra if you have your mobile you can even check that mantra you can take notes if you have got a stylus the first mantra is sahasra shirsha purushaha sahasraksha sahasrapat sabhumim vishvato vritva atyatishtha dashangulam this is the first mantra now let's understand the first word 
Sahasrashirsha. Shiras means what? Head. Sahasra means thousand heads. So there is one particular creature, somebody. Thousand heads he has got. Sahasra Shirsha of Purushaha. That Purusha has thousand heads. What does head mean here? First we have to, because in English we can use head in different ways, right? He is the head of our clan. That means what will you do? You will put all the clan members and put him at the top, is it? Head means leader, right? What does Pati mean? Husband, sir. Your wife should have come, then she would have scolded you. Pati means husband, no. Pati means the one who does Yagam is called Pati. So technically if you go out, in the cause of being more Vedic and Indic, don't introduce your husband as Pati. I'll tell you why. Only if that per person performs Yagam, he can be called Pati. Sir, fire can come from anywhere? No. Uh, he uses, no, he has to perform the traditional Yagam, then only he's called Pati. Sir, then can the lady call herself Patni? No. When the first word itself is absent. <laughs> See, we used to get, uh, in thermodynamics in my engineering days, we used to have two questions. Only two questions, entire question paper, three hours. First question, 50 marks. Second question, 50 marks. But the interesting part was, whatever was the answer for the first question is the input for the second question. <laughs> Now, you will have only three instances here. Either you can get 0, 50 or 100. This 75.5 and all can't come. You cannot go and tell that my second answer is right. I have solved it the right way. But the input is wrong. Similarly, when he is not the pati, how can the lady be patni? Because the one who supports the pati while he is performing the yagam is called patni. That is why our rishis knew our scenario. So they came up with multiple words for the husband. So pati is not the only word. For example, patni is not the only word. Kalatram, bharya. There are various words. So the point that I am trying to make is pati shabdam can denote various things. One meaning is leader. Pashunam pati, pashupatihi. So Shiva is called Pashupati. You go to the temple in Kathmandu. It is called Pashupati Nath. Pashunam Patihi. The one who is the leader. It can also come in the meaning of a husband as long as the husband is doing Yagam. Now, Sahasra Shirsha. Shiras means head. Sahasra means thousand. Now you have to first of all imagine one person with thousand heads. Okay. Here the problem will not come. I'll tell you where the problem will come. First we'll go to Sahasra Shirisha. Sahasra Shirobhir Yuktaha. First meaning is the person is having thousand heads. Second meaning. Sahasra Shabdasya Upalakshanatvam. You don't mind me reading the Sanskritam passage, right? Because I can't keep on going with English words itself. I'm using English as just a pickle. Main ingredient is Sanskritam here. Sahasra Shabdasya Upalakshanatvam Anantaihi Shirobihi Yukta Ityartaha. It is an Upalakshanam. Upalakshanam means uh, you go, imagine you are going, you have been taken to a mango farm. Have you heard of a variety called Imam Pasant? It is, it is very famous in Sri Rangam. There is one place called Tatachari Gardens. Huge place. You will have when you look at that mango itself, your HbA1c will be 8.9. <laughs> you don't even have to eat. Looking at it, mere look. Parvai undre podume. So, you are getting into that farm. You have thousands and thousands of mangoes. I'm, not, I'm just using the word thousand. So, you come back home and somebody asks, Did you visit that mango farm? Yes. How many mangoes? Many. Many means many. Many means thousands. That time, that thousand doesn't mean an exact number. It is an upalakshanam stating there are many. So the commentator says, don't take the meaning of the word sahasra as exact thousand. One, zero, zero, zero. Even if there's an extra head, no, no, he's not purusha. 
because we are all used to giving gift in the form of thousand one fifty one. Even if someone says thousand one heads, no, 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 there should be only thousand. It is not indicative of the number. It indicates there are many heads. Sahasra shabdasya upalakshanatvatu anantaihi shirobihi yukta ityatta. Second meaning. Third. Sahasra shabdo bahuvachi. बहुत्वाची संख्यावे सहस्राक्ष विरोध सैत्रसहस्रदेन च भाव्य तत सहस्रम असंख्या शीर्षा शिरांसी यस्य सह वाट अ ब्यूटिफुल कमेंट्री हि सेज इफ यू टेक थौसंड एज एन एक्साक्ट नंबर देन हौ मेनी हेड्स थौसंड हेड्स देन हौ मेनी ईज शुड बी देर टू थौसंड ईज बट हियर हि सेज ओनली सहस्राक्ष देन द ई विल बी लाइक दिस करेक्ट so the commentator says if you use 1000 as a number then it will hit your imagination when the vedam says there are only 1000 eyes dear astika reader i am happy to be authoring a two part book on the ramayana in english the first part is slated for release in the year 2024 the book aims to recreate and retell the ramayana of valmiki conforming to the ancient commentaries and other allied literature to receive notifications of the book release kindly register with www.deshikadaya.org/books namaskaram namaskaram astikas and tentatively scheduled to travel to Abu Dhabi and Dubai in the mid February to seven cities in the countries of Australia and New Zealand namely Adelaide Perth Brisbane Sydney Melbourne Auckland and Wellington between the 25th of February and the 25th of March and scheduled to travel to Singapore either in the month of April or January and later I'll be rendering discourses in New Jersey Boston Maryland, Pittsburgh and then in St Louis and Indianapolis in the month of July. I'm sure you would love to share this message with your friends and relatives.